This is the story of Radio Wars, an ongoing fight against the mean and nasties who consider people only a number in the vast ratings game and eternal search for the dollar, and the other side that fights for your right to know and considers you, the listener, the reason for being. Our scene opens in a nearby radio station's corporate offices where a blue leisure suited vice president of corporate programming is listening to one of his closest advisors. I'll tell you, JB, it's got to be a trend. I mean, according to the latest ratings, we're hot, hot, hot. It's got to be that lowest common denominator theory you were working on. It's a hit. People don't want to listen to radio to hear anything or to learn anything. They just want the same old bullshit. But they want it over and over again. Well, as a, a well-known entertainer once said, Spud, never underestimate the stupidity of the listening public. Or there's a sucker born every minute. Uh, anyway, how do you like my new office furniture? A uh, jacuzzi for eight? Uh, that's nice, boss. Uh, really nice. You could sure tell you're moving up in the world. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's a trade-out from that new advertiser. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bubba, sir. Bubba's Warm Tubs, out on Bypass Pike. Yeah, that's the guy. I only had to give him sponsorship for five shows on six stations for the next uh, 12 years. Really got a good deal. Plus, he threw in these great underwater headphones. Plus the Bubba bath. Uh, well, <laughs> sir, uh, back to these figures, sir. Uh, it seems something is happening in Allentown that doesn't quite fit the norm here. Uh, doesn't translate to the lowest common denominator. What? We can't have that. Juggle, juggle those stats, son. Get me some good numbers there or it's your head. But Sir, we can't do that. It's the listener. There is something different about the listener. Well, get the corporate jet ready, Spud. This sounds like a little on-site inspection is in order. Grace, hold all my calls. I'll be out of town for a few days. Where's that program for the homeless? It's around here somewhere. I saw it on top of the story about the huge oil price fixing. What about that market research report? Where is it? I just saw it somewhere here a minute ago. Uh, the program committee was looking at it last night, sir. They said we weren't strong enough in homeless people, so they were trying to find a program to get more of them to listen. How can they listen? They don't have a home. They don't have electricity. They probably can't afford batteries. They probably don't have a radio. Well, the program committee decided to give them all radios with only one station, so they have to tune to us. Oh, that makes sense. Ah, oh, here's that report. Okay, staff, your attention, please. According to this latest survey, we've made great inroads in the female, the male, and the other type listener. They especially liked our cooking show and that Eastern European Serbo-Croatian music blend. Let's give them a couple more hours a week. Okay, any comments? On to other business then. Who's news director this week? Same as last week, although that multinational ketchup company didn't like his expose on tomatoes, and it was a little shaky there for a while. Are we going to let some big-wig corporation executive decide our programming for us? No. The people have a right to know, and we'll tell them. They have a right to expect us to be free and unbiased in our reporting, and that's what we want to give them. Give the people what they want. That's from a kink song, I think. Uh, but anyway, whether it's ketchup or cannons, the people deserve to know where we stand. What's his name? Who? The news director. Ted. Oh, figures. Okay, everybody. Quiet in the studio. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh, Mary, like, I'm so sorry I was late. I was, like, up at 5 a.m. this morning, and when I sat down to, like, listen to this guy on the radio, like, selling warm tops, like, I fell right to sleep. 
Then, like, I woke up and realized that I was, like, late for a shopping spree. And, like, I hurried as fast as I could. That's all right. I was, like, a little late myself. Some guy on the station I was listening to is, like, giving away a house and car and husband to, like, the 93rd caller. And I, like, tried for a half hour to get through, but no luck. Beautiful clock radios. Wouldn't you just, like, love one of these around your neck? Yes, they're like the latest rage. Uh, excuse me, salesperson. Could I, could you help us? Uh, excuse me, sir. Seems to be asleep. Yeah, like, there's another one over here. Asleep, too. Help, help, wow, someone. All, all these asleep. people are falling asleep. God. <laughs> Two, one. Police are now investigating the mysterious sleeping sickness which has struck the town. People in elevators, stores, city and county offices are falling asleep in their tracks. The first officers on the scene were also struck as they entered the buildings and are quietly sleeping even now as I speak. Detective Vincent Van Gogh said it was the strangest case he has ever seen. We'll have more after this word from our sponsor. A quiet, relaxing way to spend time at the office or at home. Is that what you're looking for? Well, look no further than Bubba's Warm Tubs on the Bypass Pike. Bubba's warm tubs make you feel warm all over. And with our special new chemical process, you can feel younger, too. Yes, younger and warm. Just two of our special pills in the water, and the next thing you know, your skin is softer, your hair grows more, and your car gets clean. All for the price of a beautiful warm tub from Bubba's. Visit Bubba's today and get slick. The weather today will be partly sunny, partly cloudy, with only a slight chance of tornadoes. You're listening to... Or... You got your classical stations, your top 40 rock and roll stations, your classic rock super stations, your stations for jazz and new age, stations for women and stations for news, your educational and public stations, your Hispanic and gospel stations, your Christian and Baptist stations, your country and your laser stations. Who the hell knows what to listen to anymore? Like my new radio, it gets 345 stations, and that's just on FM. Yeah, it's hot. But I listen to my tapes mostly. You know, you can only take so much of that other stuff. Mm. Hey, man, want to race? Let's go. Move that limo, fella. Well, sir, I've arranged our meeting with the manager of our station in Allentown. He said we should be there in a few minutes. He said not to go into any of the stores or elevators, or he might catch the sleeping sickness. Hey, get a load of that broad in the car beside us. Did you see those huge <coughs> speakers in the back? Now there's a dame who likes her music. So, Spud, tell me again about this uh, rating. Well, sir, they have big numbers, but nobody listens. Now, how can that be? Big numbers of people, and people are numbers. What's happening? Here we are now, sir. He's here, everybody. He's here. Get ready. JB is coming in the door any second. Welcome, JB. Where's Morgan? My time is valuable. Let's get this meeting underway. Here, sir. Welcome to Allentown. Uh, let's use Fred's office. There's a few people using my warm tub. Now, Morgan, Spud here says you have big numbers, but nobody's listening. What's going on here? Ah, uh, sir, I don't know why nobody's listening. We've been playing the same so four songs for six weeks now, and nobody's complained yet. Well, doesn't seem to be a problem here. Are you running those spots for Bubba? Yes, religiously. Well, I can see everything's in good hands here. Let's go, Spud. I have important things waiting for me in the office. The entire 
entire city of Allentown fell asleep today in what police are saying is the biggest case of mass boredom on record. Police said it started with Muzak and rapidly spread to many radio stations in the nation. The attorney general is calling out National Guard troops to provide blankets and pillows to the thousands of sleeping citizens. More tomorrow, if tomorrow ever comes. I'm Ted. Stay tuned for night music to make your evening more restful. Good night. Last episode, radio ratings in Allentown were wacky. Bubba's warm tubs made a hot deal. Spud lived on the edge, and JB was that edge. Well, friends, in this episode, we find two lawyers in deep conversation at a neighborhood restaurant. Wow, well, I tell you, living on the edge, that's what it is, okay? That's got to be the attraction. I mean, these guys come in here, okay? They make three or four million a year, okay? And then... Chop the axe force, okay? And then what do they know about reality? Yeah, the music business is really something. And not just that, Al. Al, can I, can I call you Al? But these guys in the anchor women. Hey, wow. I, I, uh, have a line, hmm? Mm. Uh, life in the, uh, in the upper levels, you know? Meet the stars, you know? You see the world, you, you let the world see you, hmm? Yeah, pay the bills. You hear about that, that JB guy? He got hold off to the big house. Insider information about this chain of warm tub places. You know, he made a fortune, okay? Bought Jamaica, and then he tries to take over. <laughs> I'll imagine the goal of that guy, okay? He said he even had a warm tub in his office. It's just like you said. One day you eat the bear, the next day the bear eats you. Look, try some of the vegetarian beer. It's really good. Hey, there isn't any MSG in that beer, is there? Come in here, please. Uh, take a message for me to the Food and Drug Administration. I want to double their free announcements on the air this month. Well, Spud, you really did it. Here you are on the cutting edge of the business, and it really seems to suit you. What's it like? Well, you pay your dues, you work hard, you suck up, and before you know it, the big man hung himself and gets 20 years in a slammer. <laughs> it feels good. Are you ready, sir? Yes, uh, Jack was just leaving. Bye. Keep in touch, bud. Don't forget us little people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bye. Staff, I called you all here to give you some of the recent edicts from on high. Spud sent another memo. Now, according to him and his vast resources, the people of our fair town want to hear only one record. So as of now, we cut our playlist from three records to one record. Okay, 
Any questions? Yeah. What record? Which one is it? That will be forthcoming weekly. This week, it's the Seniors of Rock. Someone took that record. The person who figures out who did that wins the free trip to Mukunji. Meanwhile, across town... Where's that marketing report? It's here somewhere. The program committee borrowed it, sir. They wanted to figure out when the best time to play Afro-Serbo-Croatian hip-hop would be, so they formed a committee to investigate the possibilities. You know, that's one of your better traits, Amy. You always know what's going on, no matter how thick it gets. Uh, you were about to eat your supper, sir? It's that pizza underneath the FCC citation you just threw down. Oh, yes. Hmm. Well, care to join me in a little bit of Old Italy? Uh, pizza is really an American dish, sir. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the largest pizza ever made was 100 feet 1 inch in Havana, Florida. 30,000 spectators ate that pizza in 10 minutes or, or something like that. Oh, excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, no, no, I uh, don't care for any pizza. Hmm. So what do you think, Amy? Should we go with the flow format or try to get more Italians under 30 to listen to that music of turkey show? Do you play hit songs? That's why we're called Hit Radio. Would you play me a song? You called the request line. Well, what song would you like to hear? I'm not sure about the name. Um, it's something like uh, Another One Likes to Cuss. Well, who's the artist? I don't know, but it goes something like Dun, 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 another one rides the bus like uh Ba -ba -bum -bum. Okay, like, okay. Hey, you don't I... know the artist. Dun, dun, you don't dun. know the song dun, title. Dun, 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 well, dun. when was it a hit? Oh, you know, you know. It goes like, hey, gonna get your shoe or bump, bump, Okay, okay, bump, yeah, sure. Bump, yeah, bump, we'll get to that right after dun, the news dun, dun. and uh, a few days oh. of commercials. You know, by the money these people pull down, you'd think they'd know enough not to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches before they go on the air. Yeah, really? Or pizza? Hey, you know the BBC serves champagne. Maybe we should offer that. Our staff has enough trouble talking. Hey, what's this on the schedule? Afro, Serbo, Croatian, hip-hop. Three hours. I don't want to do that. I gotta, yeah, fix the fibular modulator. Yeah, yeah. Oh, be nice and do it for them. I'll flip you for it. Hey! Ugh, that, that wasn't very nice. You win. Okay. Ready, everybody? Quiet! Three, two, one. Have you heard yet? Everybody on the street is talking about it. It's the newest, the best, the only song you'll ever want to hear. All day, every day, anyway, forever. Listen, have you heard the stupid radio station keep playing the same song over and over again? Well, I kind of like that song. I do too, but not all day long. Next thing you know, once station will be playing only Serbo-Croatian African hip-hop, you have your country station, and you have your one-hit song station, you have all your news, no music station, then you're... Mr. Spud, I just hit on a great revolutionary idea for our market, and it's just perfect. Just perfect. Well, Jack, you know, I've always listened to the ideas of little people. What have you got, Jack? All commercials, 24 hours a day. You see, we intersperse little short minutes of entertainment every once in a while, but mostly all day, all night, commercials. Can't you see the dollar signs? Like, we can even promo the upcoming commercials. Like, the guy can say, you just found out what wax cleans your car and gets rid of, rid of embarrassing dandruff. And stay tuned to find out how you can buy today a product that not only keeps your shoe smelling sweet, but gives your parakeet hours of playful enjoyment. Hmm. Has anybody else been told this idea? No. Good. I want the whole team in on this, and I want it kept top secret. 
Let's find out who, when, where, what, and why, and how much it means in dollars and cents. So, sales team, that's what's happening. And we don't have a lot of time to get geared up to get out there and sell that airtime. $1,000 a minute. I'll sell anything for that price. Don't forget, it's 40% more if they want to choose the time it runs. So get out there and sell, sell, sell. Oh, yes, and by the way, trade-outs have to go through me. Well, friends... Tune in next time for the next exciting episode of Radio Wars. Find out if Spud gets his new in-ground pool. See if Amy is promoted to assistant director of underground information. Find out if Morgan is senile. And what are Fred and Jackie doing in the production room next time on Radio Wars. It's soap. It's soup. You can clean with it. You can eat it. It's the most valuable produce you can have in your home, your workshop, your garage, or your backpack. It's so revolutionary, it will turn your life upside down. Food soap not sold in retail stores. Some mild diuretic qualities may develop in senile citizens. Okay, ready. Three, two, one, switch. Yes, friends, you're here on commercial radio for all the things you ever dreamed of owning. That food soap sounds great. But hey, stay tuned because in the next 10 minutes, we'll hear from someone with a new car wax, a very fancy yacht dealer. Ooh, the latest in digitalized hair dryers, a Polynesian pool inspector with special prices, several teenage problem solar creams, and the telephone company. Commercial Radio! Three, two, one. Imagine me sitting here by my very own Polynesian pool. Who would have thought it possible? Hey, Bob, how's the water? Hi, Bill. I brought a couple friends, some relatives that were visiting, and the paper boy, and uh, a few of his friends. I see. You know, Bob, that Polynesian playground pool plan was a great idea. Imagine a pool all our own for only dollars a day. Yeah, for just $10 a day for me and 10 more from seven other families for 25 years. We get this luxury pool, that's only $3,650 a year. Hi, gang. My running club. Oh, don't mind us. We're just going to dip and drip. Get it? A dip on the run? <laughs> yeah. Ask about the Polynesian playground pool plan and set up your seven best friends today. I tell you, the damn thing's on. It's working. You mean this thing's been on since... Ted, have you seen Emma J? They're in the control room trying to figure out which channel the president's on. Ted, um, that story about the Belgian waffle scare, uh, was that true? Of course. I don't report fictitious news. Okay, just checking. Uh, so uh, right oh, oh Em, Em, can I talk to you a minute? Sure, talk away, Amy. Well, I just came from the underwriting department. Why do we have this order for underwriting for Polynesian playground pools? And do you realize this amounts to nearly $30,000 a year for 25 years? And they said it was going to be a trade-out. Well, Amy, I was looking at the way the Japanese treat their employees, and I thought, well, what this station needs to build strong morale and a sense of community is a nice Polynesian pool. Where? Where are you going to put a 40-foot pool in our studios? Well, I thought I'd keep it at my house, you know, 
convenience, and then I can keep an eye on it, take care of it, make sure it's the right temperature, stuff like that. Well, of all the... Ugh. Okay, okay, you can have the concessions, but I want a full stand. Know what I mean? Health food, vegetables, juices, hot dogs, only the good stuff. Sir, you misunderstand. I don't want a cut of the concessions. Okay, have it your way, but don't say I didn't offer. Jack, you're probably wondering why I've called you in here. Not really, Spud. Jack, don't worry. I've been happy with your performance so far. What I'm really concerned about is that all commercial station all the time. How's it doing? Good, Chief. Really good. Once we went to all commercials, the advertisers started beating down the door. Of course, there were a couple of problems in the beginning. You know, running hot dogs against hot dogs and that sort of thing. But we've got them all worked out. In fact, my wife and I were thinking of having a pool party at my house for the staff up there. Care to drop in and give us a few tidbits of wisdom from the top? Jack, um, how could you afford a pool on what I pay you? Uh, oh, oh, uh, well, Doing a little moonlighting, Jack? Uh, well, sir... Jack, was that pool by any chance the one that was intended to be put in my house? Jack, did you really do this to me? Jack? Jack, answer me now, Jack! Jack, or I'll have your head in a platter for this! As a teenager, you're not alone. Every teenager through the history of time has had this problem. But now, through the miracle of modern science, you won't have that problem anymore. Just a gentle blending of this cream around the cheek and nose area, and you'll be the hit of the party. It's the latest, and you'll call it the greatest. It's the newest Cassandra's Wonder Conversation Cream. Try some today and see how it stimulates the conversation in you. Yes, friends, that's Cassandra's Wonder Conversation Cream. What won't they think of next? And we'll be back with more commercials after this commercial. Hey, did you hear? Amy called out the boss on that Polynesian pool deal, and he told her to take a vacation. Yeah, but he made it with pay, so that's not too bad. And I wonder where she's going to go. And I think it must be illegal business practices or something. <laughs> anyway, I was told to take a vacation and think about it. And I came right here to you, Inspector General. Well, I'm glad you did, Amy. It's very important for citizens, such as yourself, to report those things that you think may be contrary to regular, honest business practices. And it's a fine showing of the quality of your character that you brought this immediately to my attention. Never fear that I will not do everything in my power to investigate this problem and get to the bottom of it immediately. Now, what is the address of this boss of yours that has the new pool? The Inspector General was found at the bottom of a 40-foot Polynesian playground pool today on the property of our own general manager. He stated that the Inspector General must have slipped on food soap that was inadvertently laying near the pool. The police are calling the death an accident and no charges will be filed. In other news, it was announced today that Amy Flasbinder will be appointed general manager of our station. In her first action tomorrow, she will be firing all the staff except me and hiring mostly her friends. More on that on the 323 afternoon update. Radio Wars was produced, written, and directed by Joe Swanson. Any resemblance to persons living or dead is strictly coincidental. Announcer number one was played by Mark Klee. Announcer number two and listener number two by Brenda Kasner. Spud was Pete Larish. JB and lawyer one, Seth Rubenstein. Jay, Jack, and the inspector general were performed by Bruce Brown. Amy was played by Stacy Wesco. Lawyer number two and Morgan, Oliver Graver. Corey Baker was listener number one. And Rebecca Skelton was listener number three and Marge. Bob Falkenstein played Bob, the proud partial owner of a Polynesian playground pool, and Sarah Swanson was your secretary, Alice, and your warm tub commercial announcer. And Scott Legath was sound effects and recording coordinator, as well as technician number one. Night music was performed by Unit 731. Wayne Becker was our recording engineer. 
Special thanks to Westwire Recording Studio, where this play was recorded and edited. This purely for radio play was produced with funds provided by the Lehigh Valley Community Broadcasters Association and the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts.